Hey tubers, welcome back for another adventure. So what you're looking at here is a 1983-84 Honda Big Red motor. It is an ATC 200 ES motor and it is rock solid seized. This was part of that mega deal and this motor happens to look like it's in really pretty nice shape. It's not banged up. The shifter shifts, right? Um, the, uh, you know, it seems to be a neutral. The, um, the shifting rod is not stripped out here. This looks like it's in nice shape. Still has the cap over the valves. And if you check the oil, right, not only does it look like it's full, it looks like it's clean. So I'd really, really like to save this engine. So where do we get started? Given that it's seized, let's start up top. So starting right on top here, it doesn't look like any of these bolts have been out. It doesn't look like a mix and match. You know, they change bolts. Like this piece isn't missing. They did steal a couple of pieces out of here. But uh, it, it really appears to, to be in nice shape from that point of view. As a matter of fact, if you go around, they really didn't booger or steal much from this. These two bolts are missing, but they go to the starter. But the rest of these don't look like they were out either. So that's a really good sign. Um, and once again, starting right on top. Oh, this is all loose already. Well... <laughs> That's not a good sign. So starting right out, looking at the valve flash, I mean that's a little loose, but it doesn't look like it's adjusted. Things, the um, retaining bolt isn't loose or anything. Now this one moves quite a bit. That makes me wonder if I don't have a valve like this. What is that? The intake side. I wonder if that valve isn't stuck partially open. This um, was stored just like this, and it was in a shed that was leaking water. So I, I'm wondering if it didn't get some moisture in there enough for things to stick. I um, Let's just check to see where the piston is, and then uh, we can make a decision if we could kind of take the top off and tap on it without damaging the valves. So... It appears as if the piston is quite a ways down there. Um, I'm going to put some oil in here. And let's get this skull cap off. Let's get, let's get that taken apart. See what it looks like up on top. Make sure um, it's not full of debris and other trouble up there. Alright, getting into a little... Disassembly action. I want to make sure you're going in the right direction. Boy, there's an old Black & Decker here. One. Yeah, these are on there tight. And then it always feels like I'm going to break these. This is one of those uh, cheap Harbor Freight things. It always feels like it's going to snap. Luckily, it never does. So, when you're working on these engines, it's almost like doing an autopsy, right? Hopefully I'm showing you this right. See how loose that timing chain is? And quite honestly, it's really loose enough to hop off. So let's do a, uh, a quick timing check on it to make sure that uh, there are no problems. Oh, wait a minute. I can't do a timing check because I'm seized. <laughs> i got to be able to spin it over to uh, do a timing check. Anyway. Let me do it this way then. Um, let's get the skull cap off. Remember, lobes down. That's a good sign. Um, 
I'll spray some oil on the cylinder and hopefully hopefully with a little tap 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 we could get that thing to go around let me show you how much difference a loose temming chain will make I mean look at that and I'm I have my hand position to make sure the back bearing is settled look how loose that is I mean that's a few degrees so to see if the valves were seized you know gave them the old hammer wood block tack action and let me show you what I found what you're looking at is the rust line on the valve which means obviously I tapped the valve in and the spring did not pull it back and it's the same for the exhaust here so um, I can move the piston up and down a little bit I don't want to move it too much because um, the pistons gonna come up and hit the valves even though I don't have the followers the valves are, are stuck in the open position which means the piston could hit them anyway let's see if we can't get this motor freed up or this whole discussion really doesn't mean anything so I'm gonna put my fancy dancy shovel to the motor give it a few taps and hopefully we can get it to rock See a few degrees. It's moving a little bit. I'm going to keep this up, get some oil, more oil down the piston. Hopefully, we can break this loose and it will turn about. Okay, so I got it loosened up enough, but um, remember, I probably have the valves open so. Now it's a matter of taking the head off and seeing what's going on. Uh, about getting the head off, remember you got this 10 millimeter here and you got this other 10 millimeter. If you don't take them both out, um, the chain guide, the chain taint, timing taint, chain adjuster guide won't let you pull the head off. So. You gotta make sure you get both of those out. Well, <laughs> looks like it uh, it died of a water seizure, for sure. Right? Don't forget to put a little thing on there so you can fish it out. And you guys could see the valves are stuck, very much open. Um, believe it or not, I think this is savable. Um, what I got to do is I'm going to finish pulling the jug off here. Um, these guys got to be tapped back down and loosened up. They might have to come out for a valve job. Probably that's the best thing that could happen to them. And this, right, that load of dookie right there, uh, that's never a good sign. Okay, it might... You know what? I it feels pretty pitted. I hate. I think the piston might be able to go down, but I'm not thinking it's going to come up very good. So as I thought, the piston would move down, but um, it really won't come up any further. So I'm going to set up the camera. I'm going to tap this on down. Hopefully, I won't punch myself in the face with the jug as I'm trying to lift it out of there and 
Let's see, hopefully we can get her loose. Here we go, wish me luck. Gonna be a good day. I didn't slam myself in the face. Yeah, the valves are stuck. Let me show you. I meant to say the rings are stuck. But the rest of it seems okay. I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to be able to polish that out. <laughs> First thing I got to do is dry it. Um, yeah, I'm not quite sure how these valves are going to work out either. Give me a couple of minutes with them. So I tapped the valves in and out a couple of times for getting them outward, you know, block of wood on the back, tap, tap, tap with the hammer, for getting them back inward. What I was doing is, I was just kind of using the rubber handle on the uh, hammer and just to push them back in. So, the valves with a little more love and attention, I think, I think they could come out of there, get cleaned up, get put back together again, and they'd be, uh, they'd be perfectly good. So I took my $2.50 hone here and I gave it a just a, like 30 seconds worth. So with a little cleaning and scraping and 30 seconds worth of honing, that's what it came out to be and that's about the worst spot. If you run your fingernail over it, it doesn't seem bad. So that would probably come back. And lastly, the rings, I think they'll come back. And I think one could even adjust up the timing chain. So, believe it or not, this engine could easily be saved and brought back to life and, uh, and used, right? No problem. The shifting seems okay. The oil doesn't look all kinds of horrible and nasty. Which leads me to believe the transmission and clutch and all that bottom end stuff's good. Just some water got in on top. I just looking this engine over, looking the cam over. I'm not thinking. I'm not thinking this engine has a crazy number of miles on it. Looks like it's really in pretty nice shape. So this engine can come back. What I'm going to do is reassemble it and uh, get it in halfway decent shape. I don't have anything to bolt it to at this moment. So until I get to that point, I really don't want to get it, you know, all ready to go. If I'm just bolting it up against a rat, I'll do a rat rebuild on it. If I'm actually bolting it up against something nice like that mint... TRX 250 then I want to go a little further on or right I want to I want to make it really nice just um, just a, a comment though the engine itself isn't like dented up cracked up beat up the fins aren't missing you know the bolts aren't all messed up there's not half SAE bolts on it and all so this engine can come back nice it, it can be 
a really really nice engine or one could put the minimum into it and run it um, right things don't seem weebly wobbly in here right the wrist pins don't there's not a lot of play so I I think it could it could come back nicely what I would probably do I'd probably dump the oil um, put some good stuff in it run it for a few hours like five or less uh, dump the oil put some good stuff in it when I was running it I probably wouldn't run it like crazy figuring I might not need to get some oil into some passages and not everything is going to be lubricated the best because of some possibility of some rust in there so I'd probably just take it really really easy you know putt around a little bit um, until the second oil change and even with that I wouldn't go completely crazy on it right in the beginning I'd let I'd let her loosen herself up and then and then I think uh, this thing could be uh, an engine with a, another whole lifetime on it about the timing chain until it's all put back together again um, and I don't mean you got to smash gaskets into it and all but until it's put back together again and you uh, you try the adjuster you're not quite sure if you should re replace that or not a lot of people would say oh no I just replace it okay um, but it might be fine right it seemed to be sitting on this on the bigger sprocket pretty well right and then seemed to be gaps so I'm figuring that the adjuster would probably take take the space out so there we are Honda Big End Big Red 200 ES engine completely savable and it was kind of fun digging in there and seeing what was going on folks I need you all to remember to keep your engines dry wrap them in plastic and take care of them right this is a very bad way these engines uh, were not cared for properly that's why uh, they're seized anyway I want to thank you all for watching and commenting and subscribing please remember feet down heads up and get out and enjoy each and every day bye now